or auditorium, uh, distinguished ladies and, and gentlemen. It's a pleasure to be asked to review the book by our brother, Ajie Kranche. Uh, I must confess that uh, although I have had my books reviewed, this is the first time I'm reviewing a book. So I start with some difficulties. Um, but in a way, he has made my work very easy. Uh, let me explain what a review is all about. When you are asked to review a book, or, or a film, or anything that you see, all you are supposed to do is to look at it again. He has written a book. You read it, and you highlight aspects of the book that you think are of interest. And he has done that so well. In fact, as they say, as A.B. Krenzel was saying, he has cried his own cry. Okay. <laughs> I don't have to, to do a chapter by chapter uh, highlighting of the book, which is what the book review is all about. So what I'll use the few minutes at my disposal to do is to, as it were, talk about the relevance and importance of the book our brother has written and also set it in a historical context and answer the question as to who can benefit from the book. So I'm not going to do what he has done so well. So we do some history. You know, journalism started in the Gold Coast about 1822. And the first batch of journalists were not necessarily trained journalists. They were lawyers, clergymen, and mostly politicians. Surveyors, like uh, Kukuba Kosfada. His uh, training was in surveying. But he became an editor of the Accra, no, Cape Coast uh, Daily Mail. It was only in 59 that after independence, the government of Osajifu Dr. Kwame Nkrumah set up the Ghana Institute of Journalism, which then became the main school to train journalists in a formal setting. So the first batch learned the job, learned journalism on the job as, as it was. Then about the 70s, they set up the School of Journalism at Legon to train graduates in journalism and communication. Now as you speak today, you go to virtually every private university and they will have a, a department or a school of journalism and communication. But there's a, there's a catch, there's a problem. The problem is that there's a deep link between theory and practice. Most of the lecturers have gone to the best of schools. They have PhDs, uh, masters, but when it comes to practice, few of them have, have had that practical experience. So here you have theoreticians uh, teaching a practical, a practical uh, vocation. So they would teach something like uh, writing editorial. You know, he has never written editorial, but he's teaching uh, editorial. He has never seen news as he has seen. But he's uh, teaching what is news and how to write news. So the gap between theory and practice has always been there. And it's a void that must be filled. Then you look at the, the literature available or books. There are few books for this field. Few books, very few books. And when there are books, those books are written from America and Europe for us. So the examples, the experiences that are shared in those books don't match with our realities. So that gap also must be filled. And recently, there was a conference, there's a new association of communication educators in Ghana. When they met in Winneba to look at the media landscape as far as teaching is concerned, they came to the conclusion that we need more books written from a practical perspective. And this, for me, is the gap 
that can, with his experience, seeks to, to fail. So, as a start, let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> For this bold attempt to fill the gap, the gap between theory and practice. So if you read the book, you will see that he makes an attempt to dwell on theory, but he goes beyond and offers examples from his experience and from other jurisdictions. And he has exercises that can be uh, used by the student. And so the relevance of this book is that it has come to fill a gap, a gap that has been with us for years. Now, if you want to verify, go to any of the schools of journalism and go to your bookshelves and you see what I'm talking about. And then there's another development. As you speak, there are about 400 authorized FM stations, private FM stations in the country. Not too many of the, the, those who work on these stations have had formal education. But they have been also trained on the job. So we come to who will be the beneficiaries of this book. And I want to submit that all the many media houses in the country stand to gain from the book written by our brother. Then, of course, there are the schools of communication departments who are going to have a book written by a Ghanaian with Ghanaian examples, very local examples. We, we talk about local content. So this is a book on journalism with local content. So this will be very useful to all the training schools teaching journalism. And then beyond the world of journalists, I also want to submit that all of us in this room, whether we are media people or whatever our, our uh, line of activity may be, particularly the politicians, the media will always be with us. As it was in the beginning, it will always be with us. So you need to understand the world of media people. You know, uh, I haven't had the, the privilege of working as a journalist for many years. In my other capacities, uh, as you mentioned, I, I, I was uh, uh, privileged to have been appointed by President Kufo to serve as his ambassador in Cote d'Ivoire and Sierra Leone. So when I made that transition, that shift, in Korea, because I knew the world of journalists, they couldn't uh, play with me. You know, the way they play with a uh, politician who, who don't know the, the, way, the workings of the media. So I remember there was this occasion when three journalists came to the Ghana embassy in Freetown and said that they, they had been, they, 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 had, they have had a rumor that officials at the embassy were into illegal money, uh, diamond, diamond, galamsi, diamond, which was very serious. And then they said that the, the guy doing the, the mining drives a Benz car. And at the, at, the, at the embassy, the only two people driving a Benz car, myself and another official. So it was coming towards me. <laughs> so I had to uh, retreat and uh, face them squally. Then I took them to my office and I said, I'm very surprised that three journalists from three different newspapers will be chasing the same story together. And because every journalist wants an exclusive story. But here they were, three of them, looking for this, the same story. I, I could tell see the way that they were looking for, for empowerment, <laughs> what they call Soleil in Ghana. Or they want money. So with my insight into the, the workings of the media, I threw them out. And that was the end of their of the inquiry. Uh, so this book, for all of you who work with the media, who are covered by media, whether presidential uh, aspirants, 